Hey, folks. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hey, how y'all doing? You feeling better? I am, thanks. Yeah, thanks for the well wishes. I was feeling a bit rough last night. Let's just uh, adjust that a little. A bit quieter there. Should be better balance. Hey, how y'all doing, folks? Hope everyone enjoyed the video and stream last night. Jeez, that sound effect is way too loud. <laughs> uh, temporary alert. Temporary alert. Like, we, we switch over to the Twitch alert system, so that just comes up. Uh, you might notice with the resub alerts, like, people can actually choose the sound effects. Uh, Twitch just lets you do that freely. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Pivot. Pivot. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We, shut up, shut up. we may still need to consider changing that one. But it's here. We're, we're trying more fun alerts again. It's It's been a while since we have like proper sound effects for them. Oh, thank you to everyone, Seven. You're all very welcome to the stream. How's it going, gang? Uh, we're doing a belated Valentine's Day special stream tonight. Uh, I have a game ready. I'm gonna give you all just a chance to hop on in. We'll, we'll just sit for a moment. Oh god. Uh, Arthur. Arthur, thank you very much for the time to give subs. <laughs> Listen to the children as they scream. That's one we haven't heard in a while. Like, geez, there's just like sound effects in my ear going off because of this. I need to adjust the volume levels for all of this, definitely. It's the fucking slot machine one. The sound effect stream. Yeah, some of them are so loud. I'm sorry. Sorry, I got... Oh my god! <laughs> okay, we gotta... We gotta change... We gotta change the volume, like, right now. Thing is, it's fine. Okay, so it's fine on the pivot. When it's pivot and it's Ross yelling, it's actually fine because there is a set value. But some people choose it. We may need to flick that switch back off again after tonight. We'll see how we get on.
But for now, stop the music. We'll make do. You're all very welcome to the stream. Apologies for everyone's hearing. Uh, we have something special tonight for our silly Valentine's Day uh, belated special. Uh, give me, give me one moment. Yeah, this 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 should pop up momentarily. He's down, and we have Mareep. Oh God. Wait, this is this is taking a while to start for some reason. Oh, oh, I haven't broken this already, have I? Oh okay, no, it's here, it's here. All right, there's a. There, it, it's taking, <laughs> taking a while to go. There was a KFC presents on the screen a moment ago. I love you. That is so loud. I don't love you that much, Carol Sanders. I don't love you that much. Holy shit, Colonel! Okay, it should be better. It should be better. We're here. Oh, we've 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 just been blinded by the presence of the Colonel. I can hear the pivot. That was so loud. I think that's just the intro that was loud, because now it's kind of quiet again. Yeah, a finger licking good dating simulator. Let's give this a go. New game. Before we get started, tell us your name. I, I can't type the drift RT game, the Drift King. John Chicken! <laughs> I feel like if I do like something like this, like that, 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 that's illegal. You know, you're, you're not, you're not allowed to be Mr. McDonald. Don't think that's acceptable. Just pivot. 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 Oh. Oh, no, we, we, we can do better. We can do better. Is this stream sponsored? No, it's not. I'm playing this by choice. Okay, I mean, uh, it's pretty good to just call ourselves John KFC. It's, it's that's... That's pretty good. It's always just John. It's always just John. John Fried Chicken. <laughs> okay, alright. Yeah, let's go with that. That's a nice wallpaper here. Okay. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. You can just throw it out the window and stay in bed forever. <laughs> it's like, oh, I just, let me go back to bed. No, smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this, you'll need to take it seriously. You know, you, you should you should be a bit of a dreamer. A bit of a dreamer. You know, I I I, th I think it's okay. You gotta you gotta have some hopes going into this. It's here finally. Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare. So many students to meet. Sound check as well? Sa sorry, sound check. Um, we good? Yep. Just making sure. Of 
just a little loud. Okay. Is that better? Cool. Okay, right, we'll go from there. Your mind is swim with possibilities, and you realize you're running late. Grab a biscuit, burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up. Those taste, but oh, it's because it's, it's, it's on the menu in KFC, okay. Yikes, you're in such a hurry. In fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You sweat in buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you guys won the Magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Becomes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met. You absolutely love her for it. Good morning, John KFC. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, but when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. What University of Cooking School, Academy for Learns, that's such a fucking mouthful, get a shorter name. Famous three day only sem semesters. I I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a toot. Practicing on a mannequin. Holy shit, Miriam. Okay, you've, you've, you've got to see a therapist about that. Did you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Yeah, let's, let's, let's give her a pep talk. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask gave me nightmares. I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky. She was so sweet. She told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that car with the fancy looking tower? And the other car featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time. At a KFC franchise restaurant. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. You believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. Oh no, Miriam skating critique here from Miriam. I uh cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. You can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave John KFC shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. Uh, okay, hang on. That's... I mean, it's pretty close to an Irish name for Ashling, but... Alright, be careful now. Be careful now, Mr. Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. I just had the extra letters to make myself feel better than everyone. <laughs> just, it actually is just more of like an Irish spell it or something. Like, especially this half of it. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. I'm not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you can see Ashley's best friend. Van Van the Man Man? Has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight that you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking cl Okay, this is, this is a little too much information. <laughs> what a weird advertisement for KFC. Because that, that, That's effectively what this is. Ahem, Van Van. You rang? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. Can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow for people like you to attend as students. What's an acronym we can use with this? Casal? Sal? I, I don't know. I know, right? I think they just hand us our diplomas now. Maybe hire us as professors. New amateurs can learn a lot from us. 
the first day of school about to start. There's just not time to properly tell off, tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. <laughs> see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Oh, who's who's this delightful fellow? Oh, oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! <laughs> think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Someone like this also be a student at the school. Must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag later says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm John KFC. So. You gonna make me hold this door? Oh, wait, that's me. You're gonna make me hold this door all day. No. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me? Or is he kind of cute? It's just you. <laughs> it's... You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of a room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. The scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of class. Adorable! Okay. Now, now, quiet down, everyone! Who is this unreasonably cute pup? And why is he in our culinary class? He must be Sprinkles! Head instructor and CEO of Uxal. <laughs> like, even the game doesn't have like that great of a, an acronym for all this. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! He's, he's pretty cute. What? A cute dog is our professor? The best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then... He... Walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? This <laughs> time... Ross, please! Time stands still. It's him, it's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland! Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom. Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you and you're not entirely wrong. This over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Oh, well, maybe we should open that window back up before a faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on a second! Nobody talks to my friend like that! You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. What is it with all your really weird insults? Besides, when John KFC sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. We're gonna, we're gonna use that as a sauce. In the meals. I don't know. The name just John KFC. There's like something extra cursed about anything like this. There's just something extra cursed. I don't... Uh, they're really weird in this game. Turn to Colonel Sanders, staring, st standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky friar. Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Oh, how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. This can't be a first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? 
You have to do it. He's just like, ah, this chicken I prepared. Take the handkerchief. Stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face. When you do, the feeling is transcendent. Transcendent. It has his natural scent in it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Like, oh yeah, let me just lather some of that grease on my face. Let me just smear some of that. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some crowd rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Any challenges await you? There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when it's all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the Broom Cooking Arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rather in speech. Oh. Is, is this just me? <laughs> is this just me? It does look a bit... Okay, alright. All right, all right. Hi guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Like the class is bad enough. Interrupt my monologue. You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? It's my third year in this school, with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Uh, uh, wait, who's that guy on the wall? <laughs> Sorry, I just spotted. He looks a bit more realistic than everyone. <laughs> uh, does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. He turned to see the student Sprinkles was referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance? <laughs> Class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank. Oh, Clank, you rascal! Sprinkles walks in the, in, the, in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Ah, your diet is lacking. You just want to pick it up here. You definitely need a multivitamin. You be taking better care of yourself. Sorry, all I eat is Kentucky Fried Chicken products. All I have is protein. I'm like bread. You never heard a talking dog as a teacher? Had a talking dog as a teacher before? But Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. What kind? It's got to be the chicken snack. Like if you pick the beef treat, like you're just gonna fail the game. Like yeah, let me just take out like a McDonald's Happy Meal. Chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes goes wide as he locks onto it. His favorite, oh, of course it is. Oh, oh, wow! I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. I don't like that sentence. <laughs> you see the other students sign you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they want to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to, their, to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, John KFC, there's a seat still here. It seems no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> Move and take your seat by Colonel Sanderson. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. I've only two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. 
That's so inspiring. God, I'm just lost in your eyes. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settle into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pop quiz! Oh yeah, you pop a quiz about me. It's incredibly important and surprising short quiz. Well, tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extre it's extremely important. I'm looking at you, Pop. It's extremely important. Practice good hygiene. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... I, I just, okay, I don't understand, I mean, it could just be a slam dunk, because oh, God, that's some good chicken, you know? That's wrong! Oh, no. Can I, can I rewind? What, 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 what does this do? No. Nope. Skill issue. What is the most effective eating utensil ever created? I mean, it's it's gotta it's gotta be the spork. In terms of actual practicality, it's not the most popular choice, but like, in terms of utility, it's it's gotta be spork. That's right. Uh, Mr. Disco, thank you for a thousand bits earlier as well. Thank you very much. What do you think the actual Colonel Sanders is thinking right now? He's dead. I don't, I don't think he's thinking much of anything. I'm pretty sure, like, the, the Colonel, like, had a lawsuit with KFC because, like, he lost the franchise or something. <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I don't think he'd like this game. What food is best for a broken heart? Chicken. Chicken. Tr chicken. Ca not camel meat. Anything, as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right! His sprinkles a good boy. He's the best boy. That's right! Total score is a 4 out of 5. Oh, take it. Only one wrong, not too shabby. Might just, just do alright, kid. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He nods with approval. We have your attention, students. I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Delicious fragrance wafts through the room. It tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Uh, hey, every everyone. Hey, yeah. I just have your attention. Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. Y you see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, um, excuse me, Colonel. I was actually trying to speak here. It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shut up! Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shush. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. Hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy, cold finish. Sensing, I'm sensing a little bit of product placement in this KFC dating game. Surely not. Surely they wouldn't stoop that low. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders is filled. A bucket with chicken. A novel concept. His stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've developed, I've been developing a secret technique for the perfect 
fried chicken. By my calculation, less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. And then, you know, they all stood up and clapped. <laughs> but that's all I'll say about that. Wait, you think we want your stupid a secret recipe, dude? <laughs> nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh, crafted a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. Wait to see what zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up. But she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that she is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, we got, we got competition for the Colonel here. Oh, please. Well, Van, Van, the man, man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Oh, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration to act unimpressed. I, I think I'm allergic to something. Oh God, this pepper. <laughs> Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates. Dig in. <laughs> you take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. Ah, this, it's on the bone! It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, alright, yeah, KFC, yeah, you've done it. Okay, at, at this point, I'm having a great time. I'll, um, yeah. <laughs> like this. Fantastic marketing. They got me. They got me. <laughs> Alone with your taste buds. Gripping a drumstick in hand. You float weightlessly. Yeah, swim towards the light. No, that's gonna that's, that's how I die. Look through my mentor in this moment. Try and identify every flavor. If the moment every day that tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Oh, it's one of these two. Uh, try, and, try and identify the flavors. No. No, just listen to your heart. Trust Colonel Sanders. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful. Pure. Heavenly. What a guy. Along with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man. For a flavor. Are they the same? After tasting this food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach the Colonel. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha! How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that would make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Ah, uh, Sammy, thank you for 200 bits. Hi, Chat and RT. Historian here. Uh, Colonel Sanders was discharged honorably from the military before actually reaching the colonel rank. He was named an honorary colonel from the Kentucky governor. Looks like his first restaurant was also just a gas station restaurant, too. I've, I've actually seen, like, a, a documentary on that. There's, there's, like, a channel I watch on YouTube that does, like, a lot of businesses and, like, chains like that and just the history behind them. Uh, yeah, because he was actually quite old when he when he started basically cooking chicken and changed gears to it. He liked cooking a lot and then like actually set himself up. Van was working very late in his life. The documentary on the actual Colonel Sanders is pretty interesting. Yeah, like, like the man was like a bit of a character. Like he would literally like drive from place to place, like just selling his chicken. And like you know, he just like, you know, quite distinct looking man. You know?
He had so many odd jobs. He did, yeah. A chicken wizard. <laughs> Was he this hot, though? <laughs> Asking the real questions. They they have something that's kind of cursed in, like, uh, KFCs in, in, in Tokyo. Or in Japan. Um, like, there's, there's one I remember, because it was just... It, 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 it's very unsettling. It's like a, a plastic mold of Colonel Sanders. And it's like, like a mascot for the shop, but like the proportions are really uncanny. And it's like outside the store and it, it just it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. Show us. Uh, let me see. I don't, I don't think I have a picture of the hand. Hang on. <laughs> Japanese Colonel Sanders statue. Maybe I can find it. Okay, right. I, 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 th I think this might, this might be it. Hang on. <laughs> like there, there's something just a bit unsettling. Yeah, and, and I, remember, I remember seeing like a few of these like outside restaurants and that. Yeah, like the, it, it's just not quite right, is it? <laughs> It's really uncanny. <laughs> ah, remember the curse of Colonel Sanders. Ah, he looks greasy with the shine on him, doesn't he? Okay, all right. Sorry, let's let's carry let's carry it. Let's roll mask, Colonel Sanders. Let's go, let's go back to business now. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. It's, it's a lot, life in this school moves quick. Clearly you're not going to give it up easily. It doesn't hurt to be persistent. But I'm not even joking. Curse of the Colonel. I, wait, what is this? Wait, <laughs> wait. Okay, no, hang on, wait, what, what, okay, what is this? This, this is a, this is an actual Wikipedia article. The Curse of the Colonel is, was a Jap 1985 Japanese urban legend regarding a reputed sports curse placed upon Japanese Katsai-based Hanshin Tigers baseball team by the ghost of deceased KFC founder and mascot Colonel Sanders. What the, what is this? <laughs> oh my god, he, he got him. Oh no, the Colonel got him. Wait, this is him after he was recovered from the river. Oh, the colonel's seen better days. <laughs> so he cursed him something he lost for like decades. Curse finally ended in 2023. They're only free now. <laughs> They're only <laughs> they only escaped it like recently. Oh no! God, that's a long time for him to haunt them. <sighs> he's so powerful. Yeah, he's, he's he's not gonna give up his uh, his blend of spices. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? You shouldn't learn to be fun. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. It smells of chicken, presumably. Just one ingredient. You can't tell. I use... I feel like we should get like a YouTube sensor in there. <laughs> I use mess. I sprinkled the chicken with cocaine. It's something my great grandmother thought taught me. She had some wild nights on the town. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's not that. KFC, please don't sue. It's. <laughs> oh, God. Hyperlink blocked. Wow. 
You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Oh, well, you're wrapped up in that huge revelation. You notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. Everyone else is still in the cafeteria. You decide to look for him. Find Colonel Sanders outside. Stand in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on. After I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say. The biggest plan. I will leave my mark in this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Uh, now him to show your own strength. Wow, I'm with a big idea here. To add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. I feel like, like, you know, these two are not quite right. You know, you, you don't have to, like, be one up and... You know, what, what if you put, like, a different salt? No, be modest but thoughtful. Actually be considerate. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. Flavors are complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment. John KFC. Wait, and this is before he opened the restaurants. Oh my god, the love story is going to build itself. He's going to name the restaurants after us. This is the origin story. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know you've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. You should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the, the, the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a sec. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything. Except maybe kisses with a crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature. Adorable, tiny food creations. She's, she's gonna make popcorn chicken, isn't she? Like, it, it's, it's gotta be something off the KFC uh, menu list. So, someone, someone's just gonna make, like, a thing of beans by the end of this. Like, I was like, I just made corn! Corn on the cup. I want someone to, like, make, like, a McDonald's Big Mac and, like, the colonel to be like, this is disgusting. <laughs> by the end of it. Like, that, 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 that that's the hope. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you. Unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Miriam's just being shut down. Like, we have just ditched our childhood friend. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, John KFC. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh no, Miriam! Hello, new partner! Oh my, two potential partners! I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you have to pick for a Threaten duties can be a little awkward. That's the price you pay for not being alone forever. If you want to ask to be Miriam's partner, I mean, it's got, it's got to be Clank. It's gotta be Clank. We gotta see what he does. Sorry, Pop. Yeah, you, you just shouldn't be here. Sorry, Pop. I think we're here to be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear. Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Whoop. 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 Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not even have a face. There's some charm in earnest about him. Blech. Tissue? I hardly know you! <laughs> Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two! For today's lesson, we're gonna keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island! Takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? 
Egg tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy, and you won't even need to cook it. Use an octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. <laughs> Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. That's, that's on the menu. That's on the KFC menu. It's got to be mashed potato and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we can make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. And gravy. Couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole foot. <laughs> Me read English good. Your whole face. You go beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking, partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. You better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? Oh, what, what is this change in music? Ah, oh, no, jeez, Van Van. I'm over here crushing John KFC's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. Looked like John KFC was struggling, so we offered to give them the hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a, this. This song is going way too hard for this scenario. This is going way too hard. Oh god. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Ah, doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Do you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows. We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. One thing is clear. She's coming for, for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is, re is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Um. Oh god, I, I, I feel like I can trust in Colonel Sanders. I can trust, I have to have faith in the Colonel. He's got my back. We're bonding over, like, mashed potato and gravy. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class. Let's all respect the format, okay? Turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements and contracts the handshakes. I took on John KFC as my partner for this activity. And I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you is John KFC's natural talent. Or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles. He hopes they might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Down those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment. Your hands have been cooking on autopilot. <laughs> That's, that's actually quite impressive that we've been just like preparing like a dinner this entire time. I guess it's mashed potato. You know, like after, after a certain point in the process, it's like, you know, you mash it. Still quite impressive. Still quite impressive. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfect creamy mashed texture. Plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through these steps. You know so well while, you're, while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. 
Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny will be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensils, the mashed potatoes, and lift a heap and sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Okay, whoa, John KFC, calm down now. That, like, that, that's actually assault. Uh, that, that's like, that's hot out of the oven. Van Van, do, do something, do something. Scoop up a thing full. Van Van tastes the dripping batch potatoes and gravy and realizes that's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, John KFC. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you're, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. And I has potatoes. Okay, just just go home, Pa. God, you're, you're like four years old. Van Van rushes back over, covered the dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. <laughs> just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Based upon my specialty braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Led on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Uh, you've ignored me for too long. If that ends now, it is I who will have the first fight, and you will all look on with envy. Gee, I, w I, I wish I'd even be able to say my name at this point. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and it may have turned into process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna canonically die. Oh, I got left something in the oven. I, 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 I don't feel so good. It kills him! Everyone, step back! Don't take another bite! The back of the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up and pops out. Oh no, we're, ki we're killing them all off. They're dropping like flies. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Whoopsie. Tastes like poison. Tiger class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Chalk is frozen, the whole crowd. They're as motionless as statues. Last bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It appears that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Okay, Pop lives. Yeah, I'm surprised we now have a debt counter for I love you, Colonel Sanders. Um, some quite shock, like, bold advertising on KFC's part to actually kill me, personally. Um, for, for their dating game. I am canonically dead now. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Uh, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! Follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark, more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. 
Quicken is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. <laughs> it's been... It's been 54 minutes. <laughs> Life moves quick. Colonel Sanders! Yes, John KFC. There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. Dude, I was just a boy. I had a dream. That one day, I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And... <laughs> Okay, the, the, the random moments interrupted by Pivot is quite entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, uh, thank you for the tier three. Uh, yeah, I, I might just try to get the volume right. I, I, I've kind of been missing, like, the, the, the sound alerts and stuff like that. Ever since the working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifted a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. And our souls may grant them like wishes. Floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that you cook and literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. <sighs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The, oh. The spork monster is here to fight a hero? Oh no. I uh, think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard. Connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be afraid of me! Because I'm a monster, see? Is, it, it, is his rhyme on purpose or is that just coincidence? Or you can discuss syntax any further. It's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Uh, cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes in the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Take one damage. I mean, I I feel I feel like I just gotta keep attacking. I I can defend. I try to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. Just stay back and endure whatever may come your way. It's like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork monster focus on their mash mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. To a larger, more intimidating. How you respond? Yeah, just keep attacking. Keep cooking with love. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses a uh, utilitenso. Take two damage from the attack. Take much more damage. You're not going to survive the battle. Okay, attack. Keep cooking with love. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce under the law of the quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean that up. The vulnerable spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie. Power pinch. Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. You, save me. The injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Oh, do we? I, do, we might want to show him mercy. I, d does Colonel Sanders know when to take a life? I feel like we got, if, if we spare it, we'll be in his good books. Wow, that's quite profound. Spare it. The man just tapped down your disgust inside this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul. He deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast. Don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this! And certainly won't be back, like you said. Spork monster scuttles off into the night. Defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook. On closer inspection, it's so much more. 
It's a book of magic spells. But a golden chicken on the cover. Open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. Last name to have signed it out is Borko. <laughs> hmm. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. It's the Clockonomicon! <laughs> Oh no, we're gonna su summon the undead. If you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. When you energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall as you fall asleep. It must have helped you get home. Tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. Feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Uh, Fawn, thank you for a thousand bits. Hi, RT. Really enjoyed seeing you at Akuma Con. You're such a trooper for a stream and so soon afterwards. Now, my cupcake, uh, crochet doll will be safe with the Drift King. Yeah, thank you so much for that again. Like, seriously, that was so kind of you. I've got that here, uh, safe and sound now. Thank you very much again. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> oh, there they go. Uh, you're awake on day two, and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Are they memories or premonitions? And then there's that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. How much of a secret, huh? Probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, it makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might... I, I might like Clank. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it's, it's... Like, he's moving too fast. But it's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talk after class. He's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular. He was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. It was also the convertible, convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. But he was... He was the convertible. Oh, okay, no, he, uh, he was driving a car, right? I thought that was like... <laughs> Phrasing's weird. Yeah, he was the car. Let me see. K hang on. KFC Colonel Sanders car. I just want. I just want to see. No, oh, this this is the historical one. This is just showing the the historical one that he drove. I want to see if there was one where. <laughs> okay. Thank you, internet. Thank you, internet. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. By the way, maybe it'd be best if we, if we took it slow with this new boy. Like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school. Most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now. Definitely connected yesterday. Ah, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove your, that your love is real. He's not into me. Why Why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. Secret ingredient? Yeah, I just, I just said that. A secret ingredient. There's a dramatic echo in here. Maybe him checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden when I, where I was wandering. Can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And now if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him and brought him home. He was so nice he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. You could be very liberal with the meaning of spices here. 
Uh oh. Yeah, I, 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 it, it, it might just be drugs. It might just be drugs. Virion might be in trouble there. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet, I bet he would love to know about new spices. Does anyone, does anyone feel like running ten laps around the school? They would just feel like doing backflips. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sadler's secret recipe. Besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Cough, fiver, cough. <laughs> please, please, please. You mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Oh, Kirk. No, nah, we got. I gotta make up a fake ingredient. We are, like, we are just ditching our friend here. I don't want to make up a fake ingredient. I do not. I, I don't. I don't want to reveal the secret ingredient. I can't reveal. I got. I gotta be in the Colonel's good books. She is not a friend. <laughs> We've been in this new school for a day, and it's just like, eh, bye. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know her. I don't know her. He keeps trying to say hi to me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, make up a fake ingredient. Quickly think of a fake ingredient, Abe. I don't know. How about. It was I of Newt. I know, it sounds like some sort of witch's potion, but what could you do? I of Newt. Wow. Your eyes light up. Imagine such a thing. You figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some sub iron on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. But you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people. You're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Oh, you... You just gotta admire him. You, he has a horse. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, there's a short horse dance before dismantling with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. Time to compliment Colonel Sanders, but words don't come out exactly right. What, what a horseful butte you have there. I mean, what a horse horseful butte you have. Um, dang it. Uh, that's what I said. Colonel. Meet a good friend, Miriam, attempts to cover for you. Oh, John KFC just gets really nervous around people they like. Fucking save me, Miriam! What? This is not helping. <laughs> I mean, they get food, got food poisoning. They were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. He gives you a wink and a smile, as if to say situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. With that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. The counterfeit and recipes bad. Experiment with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. But genuine question, what's like the restricted ingredients for this? Like, is it just gonna be like, you put parsley on the chicken? <laughs> like, like in this world, how bad could it be? You know, it's it's gotta be like frozen beef or something. It's gotta be frozen beef. It's just drugs. Even more drugs. They ordered to take out. Yeah, like that. Uh. What? What's that whopper you got there on your table? Oh, nothing. Try to get a peek over uh, Van Van's hulking shoulder. He sees you coming. Well, there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Um, you know, I... I don't, I don't really need to know what they're doing. Just, just stop being so immature. Like, come on now. We need to address the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. 
Now you've upset him. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Not sure you know a good meal if it ain't you. I mean, it might be possible in this game. We don't know how this is gonna go yet. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. It doesn't hurt. He was a little evil. Trying to get a good look at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. It's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van. Hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice they haven't even just been studying the book. Got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch him in his mouth. Holy shit, they're torturing this poor kid. <laughs> oh my god. We're playing, hee <laughs> hee. Well, you can dig it any further. You're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Plank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of vaults. You watch how you talk to him. He doesn't. He didn't do anything. Who do you think you are talking to us? I've never heard such language. Not from a stand mixer. Oh, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. But I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. He bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely she, he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true star of the class day. It's Panton. It doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students! Students! Please take your seats! I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. It was only a matter of time. You want to pay attention to the lesson, truly. You do. Which is why in 1776, at the sign of the Declaration of Independence, there was a chicken who first signed her name. You know, I, I mean... <laughs> Uh, shout out, there's a channel called, on YouTube called, like, Man Carrying Thing that, like, kind of parodies, like, YouTube culture. And there's one for, like, every video essay where it's like, before we can talk about why Spongebob is a good show, we have to discuss the history of cinema. Begin in 1894. <laughs> I don't know, something about that line just kind of reminds me of that, like, there, there probably is, like, a video essay somewhere there. But before we can discuss KFC, we have to discuss... Oh, the Romans perfected systems of takeout back in ancient society. You know? <laughs> oh, God. You can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most of the important parts. You come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, John KFC! Naturally, this, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? Now, a glass of water. There's not much going on there. Now, this could be a trick question, because this could be like a regular biscuit, which KFC does serve. It could be a biscuit. But it might also be the shimmer and pepper. I don't, I don't know if KFC does peppers. I'm not sure. I, I think, I think, I think we want to try the biscuit. This is the shape it's baked and you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents, perhaps. Reach out for it when. Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. Oh no! Oh no! 
I never even got to taste it. Is this the end? Fade into darkness, but something is there. The spork monster? Sporko, what are you doing here? It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. He watches your apron magically repairs itself. You won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend. Wherever you are. Oh, he saved us. He saved us. He's, he's God. Thank you, Borco. Kindness wins. Okay, um... Is it the pepper for me? The pepper's not gonna kill me as well, is it? We've already, we've already used Borco. We've had our Borco. The brightly colored pepper stands up from the other items. It sparkles in the most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. If your body's not prepared for the heat, the pepper is triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. <laughs> oh no. My friend! Oh! This guy again. I'm gonna give you an important message. You must avenge my debt and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <sighs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... Ah, oh, sorry, I think I still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. To fulfill... Prophecy. You must... Do yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man. Come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever! Give yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. But it was the water. I'm... I'm surprised it was just the water. It seemed like the most uninteresting item. Why did two things kill us? In the school as well. You probably shouldn't be serving them. Because KFC serves water. Yeah, but it's just... It's just not that interesting. <laughs> when anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. By a timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Man, that they stop wasting everyone's time. Step up and tell him you're on. Oh. Well, it's hard to tell what Colonel Sanders will appreciate. Like, he might like our guts. He might like our guts if we're like, you're on. But it might also be a waste of time. No, because save it for the arena. Save it for the arena, though. We have to save it for the arena. Yep. Everything a competition with you two. Yep. Yeah. Not with me, I'm on a personal journey to learn to love. Learn to love? Sure, why not? Definitely not the constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres cross. Cross. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? Need to eat if I'm gonna have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. John KFC, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup, chocolate milk to wash it down, and a tartlet for dessert. It's, it's very small, but, I mean, it looks good. It only takes about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food. But it's just what you need it for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Things reach a boiling point. Sprinkle steps in. Surely will put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My best, you can best the best of them. Best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. That is chicken. And you made mashed potatoes with gravy on day one. You feel like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast, the timer runs down. You'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does the water boil at? At uh, 100 degrees. That's right, how have you even gotten this, into this school without knowing that? Where it gets to rub my furry belly. Let that entice an offer motivate you. You're gonna need this this season 
season this chicken before you cook it. Don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices do you say you use? 11. 11 herbs and spices. That's right, you might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Hill wagon intensifies. Now you've got some basic steps going. It's time to elevate your craft. The state of mind offers the most flavor. Gratitude. That's right, you must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. you. Better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. That would be a great time to hire that energy. So where does it come from? Small town where big trees are born. Oh, that's right. This is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Oh, Roo! Try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? It's, it's, it's potatoes bubbling. That's wrong. No, it's sizzling. It was sizzling. The final hurdle. Oh, wait, we get the spray bottle. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, John KFC. He's actually cheering you on. It'd be awesome, except knowing that he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. All you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many schools will look great? Uh, oh no! Or you think you get your mind back into the competition? Rawr. Try it on desert. I only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Walking along the beach. What does that have to do with craft spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. The next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. Think of time you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah, oh, yikes! Zip. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow uh, uh, appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that, that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where? You might not have any hands. John KFC does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. You hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. John KFC, no! You're not fast if your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spitted feeders. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Oh my god. Oh my god, we just stuck our hand in. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find... What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now! This battle is over! Can't be, I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand! You simply can't go on! Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me winner by default. Oh no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of John KFC's injury! These sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. But because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask John KFC to do the honor. Since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette to top a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, perhaps not impressed, as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, you! As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. I I, I gotta internalize the rage. Like he's he's not gonna like this. This is just immature. Just internalize it. I don't I don't know if there's a way for me to win that. It, it, it's because I got that one ingredient wrong. If I said sizzling instead of boiling, my hand will be okay now. Yep. The darkest timeline. We're heavily injured. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck is that mess? Hey, Dan. You remind me of my late pet hamster. His leg got stuck in his cage. He bit it off and died. <laughs> 
What the fuck is that message? <laughs> Oh my god! I know what he means! It sounds kind of messed up! Why you compared me to that? I was just reading that, I was like, what the fuck is this? Uh. Okay, in internalize your rage. Fertilize your rage. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, or they fall off your face. These people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Okay, we're having a real hard time. Colonel Sanders is concerned. <laughs> Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. Beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. <laughs> and he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, from that running with the mixer and that small fire. <laughs> you're in a lot of physical pain right now. You should probably get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. You think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successfully motivated. And chiseled abs. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked outer paths. And arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed. As... Ob... Obstr... Ob how, how do we pronounce that chat? Obstrition? Obstrition? He's an English major. I, I I don't know how to pronounce every word. Obstetrician. 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 Yeah, that's it. That looks right. Thank you. Australian. Obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now. But it, it hasn't always been. I think this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. Colonel Sanders changes focus and sees something ignite inside of him, burn in passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! What are you doing here, Pop? Just as so your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scared from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster! Porco. It is! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just want to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, oh, thanks, Porco. Glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark at night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right to it into attack mode. <laughs> I know that you're strong, and cooking school can be put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once. Well, no, I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student. 
until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. Oh no. Magic spell book. Precisely, I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. You need me, don't fear, I will be here. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. John KFC. Together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? Can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Oh my god, <laughs> look at this. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Man's got like a like a VR chat hangout world for a home. Like that's 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 just like the dream there. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure. If you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago I made a decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food. But another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. Just a side dish I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy. Or perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. To reveal your new creation to him. Keep it a secret just for you. Oh, I gotta share it. Share it with the Colonel. Share this moment. Share chicken. So you're that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux Hideaway. Magnificent! Together, you chow down the creamy slaw until a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold onto the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back in this moment. I could offer him to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. I realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. In the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap an item to discover more about the Colonel. The pictures. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. In the goatee and mustache combo he sports. You figure this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. There's a picture of them of just themselves. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they found, am I right? What's this? So you keep a secret recipe. Think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As you turn the dial to 111111, the safe opens. Inside you find a single note. Hmm. Ten chicken. Be prepared. Sashimi style. The frame photo shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheers in them. You look closely and see this a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Stop. The door just opened. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. Take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you. It's soft and comfortable. Give yourself a deep hug, breathing his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders return. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. Try to act casual until he asks you why you're, wear while, why you're wearing his jacket. That, that, that is a bit weird. <laughs> I don't usually lonely as hell, but I must say, it does look good on you. We'll craft the jacket. We got to take it off. Oh, what do we do? Do we, we make a big move? Oh, that might be a bit forward. 
That's a bit weird if we're, if we're leaning in for like a kiss. I have to tell him the troop. I have to tell him the troop. You confess. I, I, I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. The thought of leaving the Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel! Yes, John KFC. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! Oh, okay, just right into it. The night passes full of chicken and weird apparitions. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. We stayed the night. To make the right decision on how, on how to respond to Colonel Sanders. Only time will truly tell. Today's a day that could change the rest of your life. Thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it makes it takes you on a journey. You return. He's waiting to ask you an important question. Yeah, like, like fr fried chicken and bre bre uh, and, and like biscuits is like that. That's quite a heavy one. Um, classic southern cuisine is like uh, chicken and waffles, and that is actually delicious. But I, I would not, I would not have that for breakfast. I feel like that's a lot to start the day, you know. I, I you know, you got, you got to give your arteries at least a chance to eat into things. You taste Colonel Santa's food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So. Would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? I love you, Colonel Sanders. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eyes as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, he'd be talking to you. It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. It's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, the Academy for Learning, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Why don't you talk to me anymore? <laughs> I. Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried I had something to ha I got worried so something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed in the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnering up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you better keep your dials down to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, and things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if it was a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooking. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. We'll give Miriam time to tell her full sto whole story, however. Following up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened. The emotional connection. Wowzers. Nergium tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. <laughs> but if being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. <laughs> After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite gr grasp that fact. Because, you know, it's he's Pop. Lots of swirly. It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh no, Pop! Oh, that's great. Order you one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Ugh, sprinkles is a dog at a treat. 
You can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. Who is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school? But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Got some nerve, John KFC. Suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you twisted my words and I won't have it. Don't your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever! Colonel Santa's arrived just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person senses that something has been going on. It's. <laughs> Bing. Oh, we get to see the new raid alert. Uh, Shen, thank you for the raid. Thank you very much. How was your stream? Please, please don't call me Dick. <laughs> It's good to see you. My stream's gonna be very confused and follow the raid from last night. I told him not to call you that. Yeah, but that's a self-fulfilling prophecy, ain't it? <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, so Shen had a stream yesterday when, um, where you, like, you were basically some, like, submitting things from chat. Um, and I sent one in saying, it's like, I, like, I, like, like, a doctor's request. I don't, I don't have anything to add. I just want people to know they called me the Drift King back in college. And unfortunately, Drift was mispronounced. <laughs> and quite butchered. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So let's let's never let's never recount that again. <laughs> A new title. <laughs> Richard King. Yeah, thank you for the raid. I hope you had a good stream. Uh, we are trying to win uh, Colonel Sanders' love and affection. Uh, we're like like laddering ourselves with chicken to try and like win him over with our scent. I hope your dating experience is going great. He's a handsome man, the colonel, you know. I <laughs> get a hold of this Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? John KFC, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fight and form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided. The presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, John KFC. I am more than capable just enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, John KFC. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who she really is. Walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from uh, how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's the book! It looks like bad news! It's just something I found lying around. It's going to be some sort of grime one. I don't really believe in that magic stuff. Grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it, if it weren't really powerful? Can't think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane writings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says written around the edges of the page. Use a spell here that says it will erase any I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Oh no! That is way drastic! Shouldn't you do something else, uh, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And there's a pretty good excuse to try it out. No, this, this, you're gonna get the bad ending if you cast this. You're gonna forget who Colonel Sanders is. 
Don't do it, John KFC. Don't disappoint Sanderson. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know! I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. That's a dog moment. <laughs> what does that mean? He's, he, Sprinkles, he, you're not gonna like take a piss in the corner, are you? <laughs> His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breed quickly. He must be hungry, reach out, reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I feel like we should just wait. Sprinkle stops at his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. He follows his gaze to see a tiny orange squirrel perch on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you to never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? He's named him Terrence. The best I'll show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem! I apologize for the outburst! But this actually brings up an important point! Thank you, John KFC, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before we can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Wrinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you, save it for after class! Prisoner! Prisoner! You think I want to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Or but no, you just have to show uh, sh show off to your cool friends, Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. The triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well that doesn't make a great date. Beep. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can, you can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Hey, is it? No amount of season is gonna make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker, considering that he himself is wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. Why, why'd you do that, Clank? In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. And like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. Pop's not here, he ate pop. <laughs> like, oh my god. Well, you must have been distracted by what lies ahead. The final competition, showdown challenge exam, TM. I'm still working on the title, but I think you can get it. Best time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Okay. I'm so bad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me? In class like that. In front of everyone. Tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, but you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Uh, <laughs> Good pep talk. Pretty lame, though. Pretty lame. I feel like you could have done better than that. I don't know if that would work on me. Dan, there's an actual... Wait, what? What about the KFC Twitter? I, I don't know what people are talking about. I missed the first message. It's a KFC Twitter or something.
There is a KFC guy in the chat? Oh wait, Hutch Master, hang on. Wait, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to find your message, Hutch. Hutch? Hello? I missed it. I I I I can't You've got it there. But Twitch is not letting me find the find the message chain. The real John KFC. Yes, I ran the KFC Twitter. Oh, how's it going, Hutch? <laughs> A former KFC representative is here. I am legit called John and legit ran the KFC Twitter account. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh my god. Well, this must be very surreal. Uh, but how's it going? Thank, thank you for gracing us with your presence. It's actually John KFC is in chat. <laughs> The real John KFC is here. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. <laughs> I hope you're having a lovely evening. Hope you're having a good time. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> the prophecy is true. I hope you're having a good night, man. That's so funny. Okay. Miri Miriam brightens up. Imagine the wind rushing through her short banks. She hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not gonna saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe sorta, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's, it's not Pop or Clank, anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone. Show a little interest, anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. But you were pep-talking Miriam. Completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided... Head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. Test of will. Test of courage. Test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off the Van Van and the supposed Man Man and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. John KFC's famous chicken pot pie. It's all coming together. This is the chicken meal. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. As soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. John KFC, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm, I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picture in victory. Pot pie has begun to bake. The smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who was hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decided that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision... What? What? I, me speak English good today. That decision gets hard to stick to when... Oh shit, okay, hang on. This this is this is from Hutch. A little bit of background context of this game. It was made by the US KFC. We were honestly just as bewildered and thought, what in the name of feck would it drop? <laughs> I mean, in fairness, yeah. It's it's pretty surreal, but I mean You know, I mean like it it's it's effectively a mark it's effectively marketing, you know? And I mean it worked! You know, it's very funny. It gets KFC's name out there. You know, like, it's very entertaining for this to just be a thing. Like, I'm, I'm all for it. Which more companies just be doing, like, weird shit like this.
Uh, it's not canon in the UK. Is a KFC Hallmark movie? I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that. <laughs> oh, KFC's really done some weird stuff through the years. That's funny. Okay. Right, we're, we're getting... We're, we're getting distracted. We gotta win Colonel Sanders over, right? You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. That decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Fess up about your practice dish. Colonel Sanders will love this. Okay, okay. You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pine from 400 yards. Actually, that's actually quite impressive. An oddly specific distance, but you expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie, but an all butter crust. My nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ah, no. I can smell it was made with a heap and helping. TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking. And I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules! That is, except to cook whatever you've got! You step up to the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that will push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepared, prepping wildly elaborate dishes, per, per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. He's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Colonel Santa seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. Intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10, but a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders betters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Anguash. Miri Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend batter blaster! Fan Fan flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Okay, he's actually using drugs. No, it's it's actually confirmed now. He should probably be disqualified. Okay. Actual steroids. This can't be good. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point. Chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's a singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self destruct. Fan Fan quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. Okay, Clank is gone. Clank's been removed. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. She's gonna use some dark magic to turn the tide. You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Santa sees that you've chosen to win your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, John KFC. Miriam noticed too. And I've always believed in you, John KFC, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Turn to notice that Miriam is, is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient. Oh, but she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get the Eye of Newt from? Oh, no! Oh no! The consequences! The consequences! 
The boiling pot explodes, sends a Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Sorry, Steve. I'm kind of in the middle of something. You mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the Grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Uh, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel a spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. I don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. We really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school when I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up, he tossed a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck! Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. You summon extra power from deep within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, John KFC! Uh, you're the chosen one! You'll avenge me, right? The power you've been summoned immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Uh, sorry! My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the, the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served! Oh no! Don't worry, dear John KFC. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. Steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What happened to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine our forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students! Time expired. It's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall. The class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle. It can only come from one student. Oh, I'm flying! I was like, it's coming from that broom closet over there. Mary, Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do? Oh, wait, no. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. Pop just Pop just got destroyed. Man's just flunked college at like the prime age of four years old. Most intense episode of MasterChef ever. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Oh my god. Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in Look, Sal history. But it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Franks! Franks! Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? Wait to hear a signature word beep or either or other onomatopoeia. It's none. 
Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow. Three whole days. After days of hard work, time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny, uh, uh, narutobaki I spy? A float in this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby leaves I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Well, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll do it all myself. In a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus! Rarely do I uh, taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. He gives you a, a huge hug. Thank you, John KFC, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up! Now describe your dish! I made. Booty over smooth egg, custard and axe hewn urchin shell, topped with caviar. Two skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different color type of urchin! Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Does it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni. Can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to pod it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof! Woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr! Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first. Can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this! I keep poking my tongue! It's qualified! Stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Rejected. Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified. For glamour. Don't discount templicity! This is the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Ah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food. At a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, John KFC. I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize we were having an Eden exam. If I wanted to be judged in Eden, I'd go to the College of Eden, school for the hungry. Ah! Uh. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insist it. Don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. The food cannot be eaten. It cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley. She finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. With that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. We're, we're running out of students. You and Colonel Sanders. The final cooks step up together. Two chefs! What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. Someone in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow, my, blow me away! My 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. 
It's so delicious in fact I did that. But everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive. Even the Van Van, even the Van Van and Ashley, drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. Gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl. They admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. And sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There's supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could it not be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete. Everyone has graduated. The students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Oh wow! Oh wow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, also a world-renowned a turntablist, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they have committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did, while well, they were villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another Hanan. No ghost allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, Musen. Now that everyone is to now that everyone is together, he's a spork monster. He is totally mellowed out. But everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone would refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. No, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I, I I get to live. Student tries to finish what he had to say. Everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry. Party monster. Rejected. Student walks off. He thinks it didn't work out for, for Miriam romantically. Found the love in her cooking. And you know she's gonna do great. The red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. Crown! Welcome back, Pop! I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's deed. Oh, now I get it. We get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of Chancellor such and such. Oh, so it's just straight up nepotism. That's how he got into this academy. Okay. Oh, the rest of us passing our exams by uh, regular means and actually applying ourselves and working hard. This guy just had to be born to get to where he is. All right. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling, of sparking, and an electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Oh, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figure out who you are, Clank. I'm blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. Portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Okay, uh, he's just got alien superpowers now. He's, he's just hes just a wizard. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. Oh, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. Oh my god, the KFC! Family feast! But it's all here! I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken. And man, by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? <laughs> it's like, buy KFC! The end. <laughs> No, it's not the end. 
as everyone feasts the delicious chicken dinner. But Osadas finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Young KFC, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, why don't you tell me, what are the qualities you would expect to find in such a lucky, lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. They need to woo me with their delicate mix of 11 herbs and spices. I like when they, I like when they just smell a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when they smell of grease. <laughs> it truly is my lucky day. Would you care to dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. Once my 100 franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, John KFC. Oh, sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. Who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. And you live with only half of him. We'd be able to endure sharing him with his utter love, the life of an entrepreneur. I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear John KFC. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. Oh, no! No! I don't think- I don't think we're good enough! And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Wait, he's still- he's still gonna love us, right? I don't know if I like KFC anymore. I I I don't know if I want to get like a a bucket of chicken. I think we got the bad end. I think we got the bad end. I don't believe this. I'm devastated. Absolutely devastated. He loves you, but he doesn't respect you. Colonel Sanders, why do you gotta play with my heart like this? The thing is, I don't know exactly- like, I, I don't know how to even change the outcome of that or how much I need to do. I'd probably have to play the entire thing again. I probably made a few mistakes. I got sizzling wrong at one point. I could, there's probably something I could do with, with uh, Miriam and not have like the Eye of Newt get tossed in. I could also probably just pick the glass of water earlier and not die. I should have said sizzling. I'll, I'll never touch Kentucky Fried Chicken products again. You've lost me, Colonel. You've lost me forever. And on that note, we have to leave it there. Uh, but thank you, everyone who came by the stream. Thank you to everyone who subbed. Thank you to everyone who gave bits. To the mods there for, for being on hand. Special thank you to John KFC himself for swinging by the stream. That was, that was very cool. Ho I hope y'all enjoyed it. Oh, God. Uh, we will be back with Connect Games uh, on Saturday. Uh, we have we have a Disneyland Connect game. Gear ourselves up for that's gonna be that's gonna be good fun. So we'll be back to it at the usual stream time. Should be good. I'm just gonna go to McDonald's. I'm just gonna go to Wendy's now. <laughs> oh God. Only going to Popeyes now. I mean, Pop. In fairness, Popeyes is pretty, pretty good. Popeyes is pretty good. Did we ever do like a fast food tier list? I feel, I feel, because we did tier list streams before. I think that might have been in there. If it makes you feel better, Dan. 
Even I go to Mackie's more these days. Oh, dude, don't. No, okay, don't say that, man. You might get sued. I can joke about it, right? But you got history here. I don't know what like, it, like your, your employment history contract is like. I don't know if you're legally allowed to say that. Like, Colonel Sanders is going to beat down your door. You want to be careful. <laughs> you want to watch yourself. John, you traitor. <laughs> the colonel. The colonel's coming for me. And, uh, coming for you and it is convertible. <laughs> be careful, John. I'll take my chances. Oh, God. That's really funny. Ah. Oh. That was fun. Oh, gee, Rin, you've picked the worst possible time. We literally just end in the stream. We're literally just ending the stream. Oh, Rin, thank you for the raid. I hope you had a fantastic time. How you doing, folks? We're literally right at the end. Uh, Colonel Sanders just broke our heart. Uh, but thanks, Ben Ben Rose. It's good to see you. Hope you had a good stream. Um, yeah, thanks to Rin for ra the raid. Thank you to Shen for the raid earlier, too. Uh, I will I will pass on your raid somewhere else. Uh, we're, 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 like, you caught us, like, changing the TV channels. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Who else is going from this point? Who's, whose care can I leave you in? Uh, there is a good few folks streaming. Uh, I am gonna leave you in Monty's care. Monty is singing. Uh, Monty's our good friend. Go say hey to Monty. Go wish her well. Ah, God. Keep my legacy alive. Let me just slap this on you as well, Rin. There we go. We can spot you better. Don't worry. We will. We will. Hope you had a good one. Thanks for coming, folks. I will see you all Saturday. Until then, have a lovely night. And take care.